welcome Group Chairman of MSG Africa, Shilumani, Mr. Mkivan Mkari, his wife, Mrs. Ipeleng Mkari, and the Mkari daughters. Another round of applause. Shilumani, Mintanza Mwenjeni, Shisaka Shamimfi, Maala Kufukiwa, Mkari, Wena, Tukulu Njaka Njaka. And the man of the moment alongside him, the paragon of excellence, an embodiment of all that is possible, son of the soil, Dr. Ruel Koza, and his wife, Umama, Mrs. Mamsi Koza, the Koza daughters, and their granddaughter. Mavona, Makelevenze, Makulam Soko, Rupangar Sheka Sinza, Mavona Kule, Masongolang Weti, Maparule, Makulam Konzo, Sherimaribze. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Houghton, Johannesburg, South Africa, the soloists from the University of Limpopo Choristers, accompanied by the SJ Causa Tribute Orchestra. Oh, 
as he gets his pay. So says a lazy woman, as long as she gets her pay. If you work hard, very hard, you will draw a winning card. Working hard, always pays for sure you'll receive some praise. A lazy man will say he's okay as long as he gets his pay. So says a lazy woman as long as she gets her pay. Good evening, Riperil. I am not your program director. My name is Zagani Maluleke. I happen to be the Auditor General. But tonight, I'm here because uh, Mr. Mkari was kind enough to make me part of the program. Ladies and gentlemen, I am fortunate to relate to Dr. Koza as one of the fathers in the proverbial village that raised me. So to me, he's actually Papa Ruel. Uh, over the years, I've been able to experience him as a committed scholar, as a dedicated teacher, um, often calm, patient, especially when he was admonishing you. He would speak in those very calm and patient tones. His teachings have reached me through his speeches and his writings, but probably more importantly through the example that he has demonstrated. So from afar and near, I've been able to witness this gentle giant and the contribution he makes in the world. I didn't explain why I say he's one of my fathers. So Dr. Koza happens to be a loyal friend to my now late father, Judge George Maluleke, and to my mother, uh, Mrs. Moronga Maluleke, who's still alive. And uh, they met, of course, uh, on that campus of Turfloop, uh, now the University of the North. Uh, and they've been friends ever since. So I've been able to, to learn from Dr. Koza. And the things that stand out for me are the key lessons about service in leadership. I've observed how he's consistently chosen to serve with ceaseless effort in business, in running public institutions, in advancing the cause of educating many young people, generations of many young people. And I've also watched how he has worked so hard to preserve the very rich musical legacy of S.J. Cos. But I could, I could see you struggling to stay in your seat with that performance. Uh, such was your delight. 
I've been able to observe how he's continued to challenge himself and others to lead with consciousness and with conscientiousness. That's what he taught me and that's what I've watched him try harder with every moment to do. And when I look at that, I recognize that the world with its complexities demands so much of our leaders. So we best show up with consciousness and best serve conscientiously. I've observed how Dr. Koza has remained grounded and yet optimistic as a leader of our society, as a husband and a father. And I saw how he remains ever firm in his belief in a better future. So I'm fortunate to count myself amongst the many beneficiaries of his generosity, his unyielding support, and his wisdom. And I most certainly look forward to hearing from him today. Thank you very much.
Good evening. My name is Simpiwa Chabalala. I'm the Group Chief Executive of the Standard Bank Group, which is the largest financial institution on the African continent and is definitely the largest financial institution in South Africa. I'm here tonight to speak to you, and it's a real privilege to be able to do that, on behalf of Standard Bank and on behalf of myself, about a great icon, a luminary of our age, and an ornament of our generation, Dr. Kaza. You ought to ask, why should anybody pay attention to what Dr. Kaza has to say? There are a number of reasons, and they include the following. First of all, he's a leading light and a leading intellectual in the area of governance and leadership. As far as leadership goes, he's a person with clear views about what the future ought to be, is very articulate about that future, and is also very articulate about how we're going to get there. In terms of governance, you ought to know that he's been involved in King 2, 3, and 4, and in for, insofar as 3 and 4 are concerned, he deputized uh, Mervyn King uh, in the process. Indeed, he is somebody who has got a deep knowledge of uh, the gentle art of banking, my profession, and was a leader for a very long time as a chairman of Netcor, a fierce competitor of ours, but also, even as he was a fierce competitor, was at a personal level a father, a mentor, uh, and a coach to me. He has got strong views about the role of institutions, which are so important in the development of our continent. If you think what is necessary for the South African national competitive advantage, and indeed what is the necessary conditions for the African continental competitive advantage, it is definitely the role of institutions. Um, it is how we build confidence in relationships, in contractual obligations, in property rights, uh, in the rule of law, do people have faith that once they've given you money or they've lent you money, you will repay it as your obligations fall due? He has been very clear on all of this. So that is why, in my humble opinion, one ought to listen to this uh, great leader. I have mentioned to you that I've got a personal association with him. Uh, my dear father, bless his soul, who is now late, uh, was a dear friend with Dr. Kaza. So when the doctor says, my son, to me, it brings tears to my eyes because back then in the, early, in the 70s and the early 80s, they had a strong association and they worked together and I got the benefit of uh, being called a son by this lovely man. At a professional level, you ought to know that he was a board member of the Standard Bank Group until 2002. Prior to that, he had been part of the advisory board since 1985. Uh, he became a member of the board of SBSA um, in the late 1990s and then became a board member of Stanbic Investment Corporation uh, straight after that. Uh, he was heavily involved in the defense of the Standard Bank Group during the Netcore bid and made a huge contribution to that institution. We've since forgiven him for going to join Netcore and being a board member at Old Mutual. But even then, as I mentioned earlier on, always admired him for the role that he played. He's a man of letters. Uh, has got several PhDs, uh, uh, honorary uh, uh, doctorates, including one from my alma mater, from Rhodes University. He's got an LLD from Rhodes University. He teaches, he writes books, and is a farmer. You ought to also know that he is the second largest exporter of avocados to Europe. That is extraordinary. Also exports macadamia nuts. And so this is a polymath in a real sense, a Renaissance man. Uh, what a hero, what a leader, uh, and what a person to admire, and somebody, as I said to you, who I call the patriarch even of my family. I thank you very much for this great opportunity to be able to talk to you, and do enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you.
privilege of knowing Rule for around 20 years, and over that time, I've come to know the multiple dimensions that make up the man that we know as Rule Causa. Firstly, he's a devout family man and always has Mumsy close by his side. He's also an astute businessman, both in the private equity arena, which is where I first got to know him, and then in so-called big business, where we worked very closely together uh, first as a as a director of Nedbank and then as chair of Nedbank from 2005 through to 2015, where he was always a champion of good governance, doing what is right and not what is expedient. Rule is also a renowned academic and author, but perhaps lesser known is Rule the musician, and he he really loves his music and often used the occasion of the dinners that we had after Nedbank board meetings to play us the wonderful music composed by his cousin, uh, often alongside some of the lyrics that he had composed to, to go alongside those. And we certainly, we certainly miss that. And if music wasn't his, his first love, then I would perhaps say it, it would be farming. And I certainly always enjoyed the conversations that Rule and I had about his farming endeavors in, in Pumalanga and, and how, the, how the latest Avo crop was going. And Rule, we certainly didn't name our super app Avo after your farming expeditions. So for me, it has certainly been one of the great privileges of my life to have known and worked alongside Rule and to be able to call him my friend.
I didn't greet Given, eh? Yeah. So eh? I'll, take eh? Out the mic. I'll do it later. Okay, so long. Okay. Uh, I'll give you my hug later. Okay. That's okay. It's fine. Thank you very much. Um, oh, I had to get this hug. I haven't <laughs> seen this man for a long time. Um, my name is Gloria Sirobe. Uh, I have three minutes or two minutes by now because I use the other one minute for. <laughs> I have to say three things about him. He's my brother, he's my mentor, he's my teacher, he's my leader, he's my husband's leader, everything. But uh, three things I have to say just to show how much I know him. I know his lowest moments. I've been with him a long time. His lowest, lowest, lowest moment is when he lost his son at a young age. We never thought he could get out of that. It's so nice to see you, Mamsi, and him recovering from that. We never thought you could. Uh, his highest, highest moment, you have to see Ruel on his mother's lap. He's a little boy just doting on his mother. And when we went to Akon Hook, and she cooked for us, and picked on the fruits in the yard for us, you could just see a rule that you could ask anything he will give you, because he was hanging on his uh, mother's lap. May her soul rest in peace. Um, those are his highs and lows. But uh, I have Obviously seen Ruel in his uh, leadership role, which is most of us have seen him. Uh, you haven't been in a board meeting with him. He's quite clear about what he needs. And uh, the example I would give is uh, in NetBank, when he decided we will have a woman CFO in the whole banking sector of the country, he decided it will be in NetBank. I'm not saying Black one, white one, I'm just a woman CFO. And he made sure that happens. Rice Sibe became the first woman CFO for the country in NetBank. That is 12 years ago. And Ruel drove us to the ground to make sure that it does happen. I have to say here, Rice Sibe is the most successful CFO in the country, not just in NetBank now just most successful CFO. Um, on the issue of the leadership, mentoring us and making sure we do the right things, the last point I want to say is that Ruel wanted to make sure that we're not confused about uh, the women empowerment thing. We have to be married and make homes. And by default, he threw at us Mums now, to teach us what it means to be married, to teach us I don't know how to call it. It's quite a difficult program, but uh, Mamsi has quietly just made sure we do what has to be done. To be a wife, to a successful man, and not try to compete uh, with this thing. Just be the wife, build this home, construct this family, and make it happen. I have to thank you, Mamsi, because you have quietly just did that. And the grace of it, the, 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 the elegance of it, the, the beauty of it, in his booming voice and his uh, strong leadership voice, I don't think people know how much rural 
positively is so scared of mumsy. <laughs> if you have to look at that diary, if you have to look at that diary, yeah, there's all manner of teams around it, but if you don't round it up uh, with mumsy, sorry given, it won't happen. You've taught us, Mamsi, you've, you've taught us. So I'm now 35 years married. And I have to give you that credit because I have just looked at you just how gracefully you control the house with not even a word of shouting a royal in front of us. At the same time, we will know that he is so terrified of Mamsi. Uh, I just want to say, well, uh, the one more thing I want to say about business is so many things to say. Quietly, he is the biggest exporter of avocados from the country. I don't think people know that. His farm in, uh, in Bumalanga is the biggest exporter of avocados through a board that I sit in. So I say this with authority. I'm not being casual about it. He is the biggest exporter of avocados. Thank you so much, uh, Given, for giving me the chance to say this while he's still alive. He's going to live a long time. But thank you for actually forcing me to be here to see him alive, because he's spending a lot of time in Pumalanga. And I'm in Houting, worrying about COVID and all those things that uh, but thank you so much, Ruel. I wish you good luck. I'm looking forward uh, to this uh, chairman's conversation. Thank you.
Still in the age of COVID. Riperile. My name is Nkate Kokosa. I'm not only CEO of Dana, I am also my father's daughter. It's very rare that one gets an occasion where they don't have to do much research in terms of a speaking engagement. All I needed to do was to relive the last 45 years, so, and now everyone knows how old I am. <laughs> climb into a time machine and be able to share these moments with you. It is so good to be able to celebrate the people you love while they, are, while, while, while they are alive. This has not always been the case. I just want to take a moment now to acknowledge an aunt of mine that we lost about a week ago. It was unfortunate that she was not celebrated in this way while she was alive. Her name is Andi Felicia Nomleko Zamatukan. She passed away on the 12th of November, a matriarch of the family, a unifier, a source of family history, a source of pride, a bold lady, expressive and not shy to speak her truth. We do miss her and we wish that she was part of us today, but thank you for allowing me to just take a moment to acknowledge her. Before I go any further, I would like to thank my brother Given and his wonderful team at MSG, the Power FM team, as well as the Capricorn FM team. The way that they have worked with us in the last two to three months to put this auspicious occasion together has been phenomenal. I also want to take time out to thank our choristers as well as our musicians, and to thank family members that have come all the way here, to thank our speakers that, sp that spoke just before me. This is truly an amazing, a phenomenal honor for not only my father, but for the whole Koza clan and for all those that are associated with my father. But to given, thank you so much for this opportunity. We actually don't know how 
to thank you. I think back to the two, three months ago where we sat and planned this and decided how we wanted the format uh, to be. So, so far it's been executed beautifully. So I said to Bud Given, please tell me, what would you like me to talk about? Like where do I even start speaking about my father? So the theme of today, the talk of today, would be the real cause that I know. The real cause that I know is a father, a friend, a confidant, a solutionist, a dreamer, a visionary, a pathfinder, a pioneer, a musician, a writer, and a leader, and most of all for me, a family man. I sat down and thought, what can I say about my father? Then I thought, let me just take the word father and break it down and see what father means to me and what he means to me. So if it's for frankness, for being forthright, for being fearless, for being fair, my father respectfully speaks his mind without offending, boldly and very clear, without repetition, there's no need to do that. He's very crisp in his delivery of every message. There's no fluff and no fumbling. A clear thinker. A is for assertive, articulate, affectionate, affectionate, amorous, a very loving man. I think you've all heard that. I remember the days when we were young, when he would go overseas and would always look forward to him coming back with gifts, very thoughtful gifts for each and every one of us. And then I think somewhere along the line, he lost the plot and he started bringing us t-shirts. <laughs> and we very respectfully said, dad, yeah, you know, we can do with the t-shirts, but please, hey, can you do something else? So he's since improved quite a bit from there. And the one thing that he used to do quite a lot for us when we were children was to send postcards while he was overseas. There were times when the postcards arrived um, after he'd arrived back from, from overseas, but nonetheless, it was an exciting moment where our father would write to us in the greatest English that you've ever heard, uh, throwing in a few big words so that we can all reach out for that dictionary, which we sometimes do even now. So for me, what I've learned from his travels and from what he's been able to do is to travel is to know and is to learn. T is for thoughtful, tenacious, talented, we have all witnessed his musical talents today, and it has been exhibited so beautifully today. My father is like what I call a cuddly bulldog. Once he bites on something and he puts his mind to something, he does not let go until it happens. And he's not one to take and do anything in small measures. When he executes, he executes properly, cunningly, no half measures. Go big or go home. Lose big or lose small. Whatever it takes, my father is that tenacious bulldog that's always going back and making sure that he, he executes what he puts his, his, his um, heart and his mind to. H is for humble, humorous, hard-hitting, and honest. I think many of us have experienced that. I think there are many a politician that have experienced that. What you see with my father is what you get. My father is humble. He interacts with people from all walks of life. He will not say because you're a gardener, because you're a cleaner, because you're a president, because you're a president's assistant, I won't speak to you. My father shows the same respect to every single human being regardless of their class or their place in life. My father is spontaneous. He's, he's a fantastic sense of humor. We often laugh, have many, many belly, belly laughs together. And what he always says to us, he's very honest, very hard hitting, and he tells people that, that what, what is in his heart at all times. He doesn't mince his words. E is for excellence, exemplary, eloquent. He's a great debater, always putting his point across, whether you agree or not, he will make sure that he's heard. But being not, he's not only a great debater, he's also a great listener. He strives for excellence in everything that he does. As I said to you, he does nothing in half measures. 
In his work, he's excellent. In his studies, he's excellent. In his music production, as you saw, he's excellent. He is a three-time summer nominee, for those that are not aware. <laughs> he also shows his eloquence in his writing and his sharing of his thoughts. I do believe that there is a clip where he says he won't write about being a head boy. He would rather write about his thoughts. He has continued to do that and has written many books um, expressing his thoughts. So he has shared that family value of excellence within our whole family, not just myself and my sister and my daughter. Throughout uh, all our siblings in Ekonuk, the, our whole family, anyone who knows him, knows that he's all about excellence. And being exemplary for him is not saying, do as I say. He's more like, do as I do. So he walks the, the talk. He's very eloquent and he's never, ever confused. R is for responsive, respectful, rational, refreshing. Whenever we approach my father with any, any request, even if it's a no, he'll be responsive. He'll be responsive nonetheless, and he'll tell you very, very quickly whether it's a yes or whether it's a no. And the extent of his um, respect, he can deliver a message, a very negative message to anyone, and they'll walk away with a smile. So his delivery is impeccable. Rational, my father is a rational thinker, very logical. He thinks through, he listens, he listens very, very well. He thinks through before he makes any, 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 any responses, under any circumstances. He's certainly very refreshing, he is not a follower. He's a pioneer and he takes calculated risks and he's taught us also as a family to be able to do the same. So Father, today is your day. Today we celebrate you, we appreciate you, we honor you, we thank you, we congratulate you. The real cause I know is a man that I would say is a grateful and accomplished son of Pios Masashibona and Sinzisani, Evelyn Koza. He's a dedicated brother to Felicia, to Charles, to Gloria, to Charity, to Oscar, to Olivet, and many, many more. He's a committed and loving husband to one mom, Sikosa, my phenomenal and beautiful mother, the one who has kept our family together for many, many years. You've heard what Aunt Gloria had to say about my mom. My mother is that person. He's, dot he's a doting and ever-present father and grandfather to one Ngadeko, to one Monene, and great-grandfather to Zoya. Today, Papa, we say, Today, your work is speaking for itself, and today, you will speak for yourself. Above all, the real cause I know is for us a source of pride. Thank you. The 2021 Chairman's Conversation with MSG Africa Group Chairman Shilomana, Mr. Given Mukari, and our esteemed guest, Dr. Ruel Korsa, live on Power 98.7 and Capricorn FM. Watch it live on CNBC Africa, on DSTV Channel 410 for South African viewers, and stream it live on our YouTube channels at Power FM 987 and at Capricorn FM. Now we're talking. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to stage your MCs for tonight, Ms. Sibongeli Gangla, Commercial Stakeholder Relations Manager for MSG Africa Group, and Mr. James Shikamwabana, Executive Manager, MSG Africa Group. I should hope that round of applause is for yourselves because you have showed up in grand style. Give yourselves a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, James. Good evening, Bosch. How are you doing? You look stunning, eh? Thank you so much. What do you call this duke? <laughs> it's called Iskova, James. Iskoko? Iskova, not Iskoko. Iskova. Iskova. It's a sign of respect when you come in the the presence of elders, um, and you're about to drink from the wells of wisdom, you've got to cover your head, you know where I come from, just as a sign of respect. 
you really look stunning. And I thought you would be, you know, representing your people as well tonight. <laughs> but you, you look dapper still. Look, my people are well represented. I'm not sure if you... <laughs> I'm not sure if you really want to see a Tonga man rocking the job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you've got a sense of occasion, I see. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Um, it gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you today. Dada, Dr. Roel Koza, a giant we stand in front of. We're so honored. But most importantly, thank you for honoring us in this invitation, an opportunity for us to drink from your wells of wisdom. No mama, mama, ngosi, kobali kalaba, elibans, ligatata. We honor you, we respect you, we celebrate you. To the entire Koza family, we welcome you all. Mr. Given Curry, Group Chairman of MSG Africa Broadcasting, and your beautiful wife, Mrs. Ibele Mkari, Molweni, Budino Sisi, at least you're younger. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, Mkari family as well extended. Welcome to tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we are convened in the age-old tradition as our ancestors would do and sit around a fire, James, uh, to discuss, to dialogue, um, in drawing on those traditions ourselves, we go back to that belief that our challenges and our opportunities, um, James, can be grappled with through meaningful discussion and engagement. And Power 90.7 in the main exists for this reason, James. Yeah. Um, a young man from Zanin had a vision, and he was bold enough to see it to its realization. And I can only imagine when you have a dream that big, you probably see all of us in it, you know, and... How do you explain it to people? How do you, you know, make it come alive? But um, thank you, Mr. Given Curry, for seeing it and realizing it for all of us in this room today. Power 98.7 is exactly that. It exists because it understands um, that we are all on a journey of reimagining this continent and that we have an appreciation, a deep appreciation, um, for the weight of responsibility that's on our shoulders to take heed to this generational call. And every day, people of power, we wake up as MSG Africa to do exactly that because we see you. By the way, let's just affirm one another. I don't think we've engaged one another in, past, in the past hour. Just look at the person next to you like church and say, I see you. I see I you, see James. You, I see you, James. I see you. I power, see you all. I see you. I see you. I see you. <laughs> Power 98.7 is exactly that. It's about seeing all of these efforts that everybody makes every day. When you wake up and you show up to the day, despite the circumstances, James, you wake up and you show up to the day and you work and you learn and you innovate and you create and you shape new realities and futures. That is why we exist. We exist so that we can allow you to express that in this platform could power 98.7, but it's always a good reminder to remind ourselves who we are. Now that we've seen ourselves in one another through each other's lens, let us remind you, people of power, why we see you. Power to you, power people. Power to your ambition. Power to what you stand for, what you believe in to making something out of anything and everything out of nothing. Power to the wise, the warriors who conquer boardrooms, social battalions, and skeptical bureaucrats. Power to the courageous souls, the spiritual teleporters, them who raise future leaders while shaping leaders' futures all in a day's work. Leaders in their own right, crowd shakers, the groundbreakers. We say power to you, the harmonic, melodic airbender, the platform taker, the voice of reason, the perception shifter, the sister and brother from another mother. To you who envisions an Azania alive, to you who have your ear to the ground of this golden plateau, immersed in conversations that are yet to be heard. To you who realize and materialize all that can possibly be done under the South African sun. You who won't give up until what's right is done. We say to all of you who know what's true, 
the time has come to dial into a frequency that allows you to really be you. To you we say power. Power 98.7. Now, now we're, we're talking. talking. Power to you. Power to you, power people. James, I think it's that time now, the long-awaited moment um, for the men of the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, please give me great, uh, uh, join me rather in welcoming Group Chairman of MSG Africa Broadcasting, Shilumani, Mr. Given Kari, and pioneer, son of the soil, Dr. Ruel Koza. Yakaya le kam saba jele zai fumango moha shangena le shuluma na mitsanda jele zas tatingoma mita umana mikho tipela shikekekile he uma le shitube Nanswela ni miti pina inga fika Ngwenya nkelenge Tomu hibza kwe mulungu ntima Bakita maja Use him yungu Kasi impela maja Amola kuta tomu michelela Vatra ande kile Vata fusha na sichele na mzaka mtilogu Vata jele zamkari, cheyeza shagia, se moa amse mfunderi ni kutamba na kuchina, se moa vangatami eu la mitaluza, tamseka nishangen tum madala wantohe. Halala. Etsi. My task is not so much to cover as it is to discover. Not so much to play as it is to display. I am here to remember the dismembered and to embody the disembodied by summoning the ancestors. Inaka, zitele kutaluma shilumana akonza alumeka. Alumeka riboni, alemuka kulumuka vele rangwa jimison. Zingena hivu gigigi, zigia migilo ya kugila mugimeti, anga sinagimeta. Loko arikosa loa le manombele, utumbuluka le koseni. Kwa le tsukeni rashi sungele. Ndi tsikeni ke ndi mukemela agengela uswa itachovela mfino. Hi tsikeni hija ama kota peni hiye sisa imangoza. Ndi tsikeni ndi lota ripanga hishiburi ndi tsika nyunzu. Ripanga alero kawa omuri sheka na role. Mabona swa senu, na swa senia. Matongo la ngweti a owa gambu linga si chona. Makulusko po magelewe nde ko makwala. Lo ima inkombe anantwe la munyu majeke jekeni. Lo luma humu inchila ayarima maribze. Ibe achele tankanyi inyuku wa ye mwinyi vakiti. Lava, iba kantila au lanziwi, utzande vangoni na vanyombozi. Ila vo nyembula ribze, ishi renze. Ngomu ngomu shi huurisha zonga. Kosa, lo tamba, atamba hunguwa alumbe tatilo. Loko nzikutani, nzipurumula bondo rasi nzisani. Nzifunungula shithambetwana shama sashubona. 
Hilei ngengenza. Hilo ngelengende. Ruele wamba embai. Watu wankanyi wangwa magenge. Mahora nsisi hinga tiaba lala. Mumbai wakumbeya. Teka nukunyika. Sheza ifumangomo. Yekaya leka mshava. Jeleza ifumango moha, shangena lesho luma na mintanta. Jeleza stati ngoma, mita umana mishoti gaza. Shiteke kile, hei umale shituve. Mamelani miti pina ingafika, ngwenye ankelenge. Tomu hibza kwe mlungu nti maba kita maja uze emi yungu. Kasi impe la maja abola kuta tomu bachelela. Vaka kekile seba fusha nabi kwele na mtuaka mtilo u. Vata jele za mkari cheye za shagia se moa. Am se mfunderi ni kutamba na kuchina. Se mo hono hono. Vanga tami heu la mita luza. Fulani nze la shangen. To umu madala le shantohi. Hala. Eti. Now, old man mkari, come and seize your reins. They are burning my fingers. Tana tomu, teka matomu. Tana tomu, teka matomu. Nza atwa enzi ilo. Mpu, ilaw. Zishambanya, intukulu wawe na jezefina nga tele nzutini. Wamse, seleka miyaka yaka. Pucho yoyo. Shamina ibangu. You may clap. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Dumelang, uh, you can't sunburn at this hour because we've been warning each other the whole day. But um, I want to first, before we proceed with the program, I want us to take a moment, South Africa and I guess the rest of the continent, we've gone through a lot in the past year and a half. A lot of loss a lot of pain, and I guess I want to take advantage of one family, Akabaloi, as a proxy and representation of, uh, a representative of what most families have gone through. And we mourned him together. He was one of us loved by South Africa. I want to take this moment for us to honor our dear brother, the ancestor of power and MSG, a young man, Bob Mabena. Shall I have a moment of silence for Mr. Mabena? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. And I know that each and every one of us here does have someone very close uh, who they have lost. And we are being told that the fourth wave may be coming. We've heard about one or two people who called us tonight that they were not going to be able to join us because they are worried that they may be catching uh, some flu of sorts. And they were responsible and cautious enough uh, to be here. But, so, let's thank God that uh, most of us are still standing and pray for those who are still going through a lot of loss that may their comforter or their creator as we continue to build ourselves as individuals and as we continue to build our families and our businesses. I want to acknowledge Vareiki because uh, these things do cost a bit of shillings. Um, Sipoma Seko Serameta Ukwong Gugum Tembu and the rest of the team at Telcom, 
you guys were the first believers when we pitched to you the idea of the chairman's conversation and you put money behind it year one and here I, I, again. Shall we please give Telcom a round of applause? <laughs> I also want to thank our broadcasting partners, CNBC Africa. We, there were some people who don't quite like that much anymore because they misbehave. And the team was saying, who are we partnering with? And I said, I am Labakulu, Moya Taibzela. And indeed, Moya Uibzerile. I called a young man out of Dubai. His name is Rakesh Wahi. I said, Brad, you want to play? And he flew the following week all the way from Dubai. It was the shortest meeting of my life. CNBC Africa said, we're game. You've got pan-African aspirations as MSG. Your guest is a leader on the continent. It makes sense when I'm carried that you partner with us. We'll not only talk to South Africa visually, we'll take to each and every country on the continent. And this time we'll also stretch you uh, in the Middle East. So to our colleagues in West Africa, in the Middle East, East Africa, Southern Africa, and South Africa, uh, watching through CNBC, those who are streaming the world over, we just want to celebrate our brothers and sisters from CNBC. Shall we give them a round of applause? I also want to acknowledge, uh, those who know me, you'll know that I'm a petrol head, I love my cars, I love sport, and it makes sense that uh, we'll partner with the sexiest automotive brand in the world, Italian made, but what is particularly special about Maserati is that it's actually the only global luxury brand I know that in sub-Saharan Africa is in black hands. And so I want to acknowledge the chief executive of Cornerstone Group, Mr. Bruce Zungu Manzini, and your team, Brad and Bev, at Casa Holdings, for driving us, putting a bit of cash, and making us look good. Shall we give Manzini and the black team of Cornerstone a round of applause? <laughs> we always have friends. In the last chairman's conversation, African Bank came on board, and now there's an amazing team as well at African Bank, KGB, as Bruce Zokumalo, uh, Chairman Tabo, Thank you so much. Uh, our dear brother, uh, Adrian Goh, who's been a sponsor and a friend for over 20 years, your team Hilton, and everybody else at Discovery uh, uh, Group Holdings, as well as at the bank. Uh, thank you so much for, for your support. I am particularly proud of my homeboy, Alex Mabunda, and the rest of the team, who for several months now, without a big advertising budget, have known that you are not defined by where you are today, but where you're going. And Alex Mabunda and the Tiso crowd have always played with us in Tiso Group. Well done and congratulations, guys. Thanks for partnering. <laughs> I, hope, I hope I have some for my lunch or dinner. Shall we get to it? Repair it all. Hey. Me puke. Me puke lem jam. Me na shibi ndrume. Uh, <laughs> on a serious note, um, I, I, um, a lot of people were very disappointed that uh, in 2019, they thought we didn't have the chairman's conversation. I keep reminding them, the nature of the chairman's conversation is that whether you come in person or not, South Africa continues to talk. Yeah. And, and I think we must give President Ramaphosa some credit because if you think about it, he couldn't make it in November of 2019, and in February, we had COVID. So I'm thinking our president must have had foresight to introduce us to the concept of social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mr. President, I know you're watching. <laughs> Thank you so much for honoring us. Thank you so much for honoring the continent. Thank you for honoring uh, these people. And I think in one of the promos, um, you, do, you do say that you don't want us to bore people uh, with your background because, as you said, with, uh, with that pose, who cares? <laughs> so, but um, once again, thank you for honoring us. Um, why are you here? 
Why am I here? I think for a variety of reasons. First and foremost, where you are concerned, you and I beat our drums to the same God. So I couldn't say no. Secondly, uh, our paths have crossed in the past, even though we belong to different generations. We went to the same high school, Bankuna High School, that was popularized by one DZJ Mtebule. That's where we actually developed our roots. I believe um, it's Socrates who says, uh, parents, we thank because they bring us to this earth. But teachers, we thank even more because they build character where the children are concerned. And I would like to dedicate just one second to one DZJ Mtebule, who was a character builder of some mammoth proportions. He built your character. He built Professor Tinyiko Maluleke's character. He built my character. He built Tito's character and many, many more. So we would like to pay tribute, as it were, to teach us, as it were. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but then uh, also, I need to, perhaps, I should start by recognizing those uh, that came before us and cared to think. Cicero opines that gratitude is not only the greatest of all virtues, it is the mother of all the rest. To which one, um, Bishop Ambrose says, there is no obligation more urgent than that of uh, returning thanks. So I want to kick off, if you allow it, by uh, thanking everybody who, who is here present, but even those that actually waxed lyrical about what little achievements I have uh, notched up out there via your platforms. This particular platform as uh, Power uh, FM and Capricorn. Uh, many have said many, many good things about me. Uh, I just don't know how to relate to that. I relate to it with uh, mixed feelings. Call it uh, elation, which uh, I believe is appropriate, but also with some measure of morbidity. Why morbidity? Uh, because um, the kinds of good things that they've said about me are things you say about somebody who can see no more, somebody who has made the transition to the year after. But I'm still here, hence the morbidity. Uh, I feel that uh, whatever happens, you know, when I finally make my transition to eternity, you don't have to organize anything. All you need to do is to play what actually happened this evening here. I would like to thank my daughter, Kateko, for those wonderful words. I, you know, I, I, I never thought uh, she admired me the way she did. <laughs> I'm, I'm the only guy in the family, and uh, all of them actually gang up and hit me over the head. But today I know that she actually is very affectionate. I would like, by extension, to thank the entire family. Uh, I think Gloria was right. I... Uh, relate to my wife with a mixture of affection and trepidation. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. My daughter, my other daughter, who is uh, the quieter one, Munene, my granddaughter, Zoya, uh, thank you for accompanying me here. There are brothers also. I don't want to uh, bore you with a litany of the Keith and Kin that actually responded to the Clarion call. But if you allow it, just one minute, may I also thank the daughters that are my daughters by choice, not by some biological dictates. Sagani, 
Gloria Tomato. You are my daughters by choice. And I believe there is a manner in which that may actually be even more significant than those dictated by biology. Thank you very much for what you actually had to say about me. I also have uh, sons in Sim. <laughs> Sim uh, uh, in the 80s. His father used to say to him, when you grow up, I would like for you to beat that guy talking about me, and I'm so delighted. He has come and whizzed past me in a manner that I believe is very commendable. Um, those who know, in Shangan, but in English, uh, you would actually use big terms like, uh, this is quintessential sublimation. I can, I, can, I can say no more than that, and I would like to thank everybody who said something so wonderful about me, including my former um, colleague at, uh, at NetBank. Um, what I say about them, I extend to everybody yes. who has participated in this. Let me not bore you with uh, uh, thanksgiving, but I felt I should actually extend that because gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the mother of the rest. So I, I also have to sing for my dinner. Nzala Mamkari. Reranzu. Valeri. Tsulu. Namano Oksaseka. My four girls and the big girl, my wife, Ipileng. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Koza is um, the wealthiest man I know. Bafumile. <laughs> this man is very rich. He just doesn't want you to know how rich he is. But I think people like Sin, people like Man Gloria Bunkateko have demonstrated and have shared or sampled us on the depth of his wealth. You see, wealth is exactly that. Riches expire and they perspire. Wealth is disciplined, it lasts. Wealth is family, wealth is love, wealth is peace. Uh, who, who was it who said, uh, and you still smile? Only a wealthy guy can tell you stuff, and, and it's hard, but it's tolerable, and it feels right. <laughs> um, we saw his wealth demonstrated here through music. There's a role of wealth in the form of wisdom in his books. So those who haven't as yet tapped into his wealth, it is for free. Please tap into it. Refueler, Dr. Kosa. Have you always known from the time you were born that you are wealthy? No, not at all. Um, I believe you're equally wealthy. I don't know of uh, anybody who actually uh, started a radio station at age 19. When you were a Teflop and were breeding for a bachelor's degree, you actually uh, saw it fit to establish a radio station, and insisted on the authorities that were there that they should actually introduce media studies. So I believe you're very wealthy. And uh, you went on to uh, study in the US, and when you were there, not only did you pursue your studies uh, in uh, media, but you also established an association that infused African Americans who were somewhat plastic in their approach with the true spirit of Africa. And I want to believe that uh, that indeed uh, is a kind of wealth that does not expire. But uh, be that as it may, I didn't know much about uh, what was going to eventuate. But I would like to uh, suggest to us all that uh, whatever it is you do, you must develop and uh, crystallize a sense of destiny. I was lucky 
to uh, crystallize that when I was uh, doing my fifth year of primary school. It was course number three then. There was a, a principal uh, who came from Morija. He was not a local guy. He had a BSc and um, a BD. He stayed with the missionaries at the mission school where I went. And uh, not only was he handsome, he also had uh, uh, ch children that could rival your daughters in ah, beauty. Never. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, very, very importantly, what uh, inspired me was the fact that uh, he was not very shy. Uh, he had BD and BSc etched on the door of his principal's office. But that was not enough. Uh, when we, ha we had to go home, we had to go past his homestead, and they used to cook very, very good food, not the kind of food that uh, we ate in the village. So as we went past there, it was at a time when uh, the food was just about ready, and um, the aroma weaved across uh, what passage we're going to go through, and we'll slow down and imbibe in that aroma. <laughs> so I said to everybody within hailing distance of me that one day I shall be principal, so I can eat food such as that whose, whose aroma I am enjoying. <laughs> so I never got around to becoming a principal, but uh, I've been lucky to, to be chancellor of two universities to date. Now counting to and, three. And now going for the third, I believe that's some kind of principalship. So develop a sense of destiny. From that, derive what you could call your vision and pursue that vision predicated on a set of values. Because otherwise, I mean, you'll snap and you'll find yourself in limbo. Pursue that vision predicated on a set of wholesome values and pursue it relentlessly. Let, let's, let's take it to, to, to the nation, to the country. There's a sense that um, we, we have retreated to our houses, to our families, to our jobs. There, there was a time in this country where we, we, we kind of had a sense of working towards something. Do you share that observation? And if it's true, what could be the reason why so you spoke about individual vision. Is there, in your sense, a South African vision right now? And if not, when did it die in your, in your observation? I believe there is some vision in so far as um, the National Development Plan has been crafted. And uh, it is all of 418 pages. The vision is stated in four pages. Now, for a, a mind such as mine, by the time I get to page four, I've forgotten what the vision is about. So if you want to articulate a vision to me, make it one sentence that I can sing on a daily basis as a mantra. So there is a sense in which we do have that vision. Uh, we're pursuing it somewhat. We have had all manner of uh, you know, plans, you know, going back to Asgisa and all of those plans. But I believe where we go wrong is actually have plans instead of having active planning. The two are very, very different. Active planning actually says you have a goal to pursue, but there shall be timelines and deadlines. There shall be moments of reflection. Reflection is thinking about that which you actually are trying to implement, but it also gives you a moment to think about thinking. And that's where we actually fall short. Our leadership don't have timelines. They don't have monitoring. The implementation apparently is something that they believe can drift. And from that drift, they take it we shall get somewhere. And I believe that's where we make a big mistake as a nation. Now, there is a sense in which, um, as individuals, as a nation, 
as organizations, we are in a very, very real sense in a process, in a process of becoming. You can't stand still. We're in the process of becoming something that would actually be banished to the past or becoming a harbinger for the future. There is a sense in which uh, I believe, um, with respect, current leadership does not fully comprehend the fact that you can't stand still or just um, mouth platitudes and explain things, describe things, and not inspire and implement. What, what, what would... Um give that level of comfort to any leader or any cohort of leadership to do that, um, surely it must be that they would know that there's no consequence. To have the confidence to repeat pronouncements, posture, without tangible evidence of that active planning. Surely we must have a society have said, it's okay, it's permissible. Yeah. There is a sense in which you can cheat and get by. There is a sense in which you can um, take things somewhat lightly uh, and become something in the region of um, the establishment. Now, there are essentially two parties, the establishment and the movement. Hmm. Now, the only way the current establishment, the ANC has become the establishment, the only way they can actually survive is to become the party of the movement, forward movement with purpose, forward movement with a mission, a national mission, forward mi movement with a plan that needs to be implemented with commitment, forward movement that countenances no carpet beggars and scoundrels, forward movement that does not uh, allow themselves to degenerating into running a nation uh, with embezzlement as the motive. Forward movement that does not allow a nation to, de to, de to degenerate into leptocracy, which is where we find ourselves now. I, I would like us to spend time to, as, as people who are watching and uh, those who are listening, to work out potential solutions to both national and, I guess, continental questions and concerns that we have. But I also want to do a bit of diagnostic work. Okay. What is not leadership? What is not, not leadership? What is not leadership? You could have asked me a question about what is leadership. No, no, I don't want to go but, there. Um, I want to know what is not. <laughs> what is I've not read, leadership? I've read all your books and, and I understand. <laughs> and, and we spent, I've, I spent a, he's my father. I spent a lot of time with him. Uh, and he's a father to almost every successful professional I know and a few entrepreneurs call him my father. So we all claim he's our father. But I want to understand, Dr. Koza, what is not yeah. leadership? What is not leadership? is, in fact, the antithesis of leadership. Okay. <laughs> it, is, it is actually misleadership. Now, misleadership um, takes various manifestations. What is not leadership is ignorance that masquerades as knowledge. There are leaders who want to believe there is such a thing as a born leader. I don't believe there's any such. Leaders are born, then made. 
You're born with talent, you develop the talent. If you have not developed the talent and you remain ignorant, you shall mislead if you, want to, if you have pretensions to leadership. So what is not leadership is ignorance. What is not leadership is carelessness. We don't respect humanity. You step into leadership because you want to be self-serving. What is not leadership is um, evil leadership, which is in fact misleadership. Leadership that uh, tramples, that lords over followership as opposed to actually persuade followership to follow it. We have had uh, many, many examples of misleadership or, or, or what is not leadership. Um, Hitler well, epitomized what was not leadership, what was misleadership, plunged humanity into a world war. Very, very persuasive. But persuasiveness alone does not do it. He lacked ethics and ethical conduct. Now, what is not leadership is that which is devoid of a commitment to morality and ethical conduct. That, in a sense, encapsulates what is not leadership. We can actually talk the entire evening yeah, yeah. about that, but Ntabia I want kayo. to believe that Ntabia in a nutshell, that's Ntabia what it is. Ntabia kayo because um, uh, sometime in the late 70s, and, 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 and um, I've had a few remarks from people who I'm active on Twitter, and, and I would like to recruit you. It's, it's fun. It's a, it's a, lovely, <laughs> it's a lovely platform. Um, where some people say, this rural cause of yours, I think it was Sim who mentioned that you're on the board of... Standard uh, Bank. Actually, you're on the advisory board of the Standard Bank board before even the board in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Now, a young man from Bushbuck Ridge, Standard Bank, I'm going to show you some colors. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, people question, what type of a young man gets you on the board in apartheid South Africa of a bank and you've done quite a few board ships? Take me to the time you get summoned to Lusaka, where our... Uh, the ANC at the time, prior to liberation, also had question marks about you, wanted to understand something. Take us through that uh, within the limited times that we have. As a member of the BMF, uh, which I was a founding member of, but uh, never got to be president because uh, I was uh, in hot pursuit of the elusive rand, <laughs> and I couldn't uh, <laughs> uh, take anything that came in by way of an obligation. We um, joined the entourages that actually went to Lusaka to meet with the ANC. Uh, it was on that occasion that I met for the first time with the likes of Joel Nejitenje, uh, Tabombeki, Paulo Jordan, um, and a good number, and, and, and the former president, uh, uh, Mshalozi, uh, for the first time I met with them in Lusaka. This is more or less uh, what year? In 1987. 87. And we got talking. And one of the more uh, articulate, brighter one actually asked, us me, asked me the question, uh, or asked BMF the question. I won't say Paolo Jordan, but let's proceed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he said to me, how can you say you are also in the struggle when you are ac actually making common cause with capitalism, making common cause with uh, the oppressors? Um, how can you say you are also in the struggle? Uh, can you actually be struggling with us and be engaged in the struggle back home? How can you ride two horses at the same time? And that metaphor is fairly powerful. So there was a bit of silence. And I indicated to him that if you're creative enough, you can actually ride two horses at the same time, as long as uh, you're actually clear as to which way you want to go. And I went on to say that, in fact, you can even ride eight horses at the same time. What you do 
is to inspire and harness them and do your bidding. And then there was silence. Hmm. But I went further to say that whenever you come back as our liberators, you don't want to come to a nation that is purely a polity. You want to come and run a political economy. You want to actually run a country that is strong on economics and business as it is strong on political leadership. And when I finished uh, my little explanation uh, on that day, in fact, uh, when we arrived on Friday, uh, Oliver Tambo was not there. But they told him that there are these uh, appetite fellows <laughs> who would like for you to come and meet them. <laughs> so, but when I finished with that explanation and also gave them a little bit of uh, our understanding of history, because I'm also a student of history, Correct. Um, the old man jumped off the seat that he was sitting on. This is Tambo. Pardon? This is Tambo. This is Oliver Tambo. Yes. As if ejected by some spring to come and embrace me and said, we believe there's hope. So let's fa fast forward to um, a few years ago, a comment that has become a... Uh, uh, that has become a trending statement, uh, the strange breed of uh, leadership that is widely quoted. So when you get summoned by uh, generations much younger than you met their parents and their leaders a few years later, uh, questioning your intentions with that statement. Um, were you able to do some juxtaposition and, and, and relationship between your relationship with the ANC then and the leaders and these ones who say, why we look at that publicly? How do you reconcile the two worlds? I, th I think very, very different. If you look at uh, the ANC from uh, 1912, they actually took uh, uh, trouble to study. Most of the leadership of this organization were people who had actually studied. Uh, they were lawyers, they were preachers, they were teachers, they were doctors. And throughout the various epochs of the organization, uh, it was people who, who had taken trouble to prepare themselves for, to step onto the leadership uh, stage, leadership platform, and not people who were cast ashore by a wave of populism. What, what actually made, you know, what, what, I didn't, what I did not say about our visit to Lusaka was that, in fact, I got fired from Tefluop for being a member of the ANC yeah. underground and working pretty hard uh, on that score, uh, turning the psychology society into a platform mm. for grappling with the challenge of decolonizing the African mind, mm. uh, turning the choral society into a vehicle to convey mm. our plight. Mm. So it's all very well singing songs by Tchaikovsky, by Handel, by all of those composers, but we also have to sing our own songs mm -hmm. that will creatively communicate the, the message. Mm -hmm. So there is a sense in which uh, one hearkens to that. But what I believe might actually be going wobbly could be the fact that we actually step onto the leadership uh, platform without preparation. So, sh so should, should the public in future, somebody says, vote for me, should we be asking for people's uh, educational um, struggle credentials? There is a sense in which uh, if you want to lead South Africa in the 20th century, you got to stack up against a number of criteria. The first one is the ability to deal with complexity. And you can't deal with complexity with a conceptual basket that's empty. <laughs> so the ability to deal with complexity, key. You got to understand globality and find a way of locating your political economy, your nation within globalization. 
Now, you do have a number of uh, leaders currently who can hardly spell globalization, let alone understand the content. <laughs> you also uh, need to uh, be an ethical leader. If, 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 if for whatever reason you don't believe in ethics and you, have, you don't have the requisite competence, I would suggest have no pretensions mm. to leadership. But it's tempting. I mean, it looks like it's a, it's a lovely space. You get driven around. You uh, get to hang out with um, whoever you want to hang out with. It's tempting, right? Yeah, I mean, if, if the society allows it, why shouldn't people take it? Well, there's a sense in which society allows it for a while. Uh, give uh, a dog a long rope and hang him. Uh, I believe the long rope has been given and something uh, is beginning to tell. Um, but in addition to that, I want to believe that uh, those of us who are your age, uh, those of us who are on our way out but are very, very concerned about the future of our nation, must throw down the gauntlet to the youth. The millennials who have not experienced apartheid and how caustic, how painful, how repressive it was as politics of oppression and suppression and economics of exploitation mm. and exclusion must actually link up with those that experience that. And those who have experienced that must throw down the gauntlet. Let those who are educated, and South Africa is very, very fortunate to have an entire section of the population educated. The, 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 the educated who are now just armchair critics must enter the fray. The educated who are actually blasé about the state of our political economy must fold their um, sleeves and enter the fray. And we have the critical mass. Uh, so if, for whatever reason, our leadership leads us down the wrong alley, we have ourselves to blame. And in South Africa, Dr. Koza, when we talk about leadership, the image that volunteers itself to our minds is that of a politician. Yet, the last few numbers I've done, I think uh, there are quite a lot of educated people in this room I mean, our fiscus is about what? 1.56 1, 1. trillion. GDP, last time I checked, they're calling us liar, but it was somewhere around mm -hmm. 6 point something trillion. And I stand to be corrected, I'm on CNBC for one of mine. Um, why is it that particularly black professionals, black business people, we seem to be contesting less than a quarter of the size of this economy by so focusing on government, spend, opportunity, as if to outsource the balance, which is the majority of our economy. Why? Why is that? How, 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 how do we shift this obsession with public funds when the real money is actually outside the state, oh, this economy? Oh, very much so. But there is a sense in which I think um, we as the African intelligentsia like pontificating about things that don't yield. I think it's about time that we actually explored and better understood why it is um, that uh, black economic empowerment alone can't do it. Yeah. Black economic empowerment, uh, as legislated, is commendable. That's where our government, I believe, has come up with something useful. Because you cannot expect people who, for generations, have been excluded, have been oppressed, have been trampled over not to be given an opportunity to catch up. 
no one can argue about, I mean, against enabling a section of the population to actually catch up and begin to compete as it should. But the problem that I believe we have as uh, that black segment of the population or black sector of the population uh, fail to understand is that money is good capital. But ultimately, when all is said and done, real capital is intellectual capital. Hmm. We have to develop our intellect such that if somebody pulls wool over our faces and say uh, black economic empowerment has delivered, shut up, and you know that 62, 65% of the wealth of the country still vests in the hands of about 8 or 9% of the population. Something is still very skewed. We are in government. We can legislate the kinds of things that need to happen. But legislation alone can't do it. Mm -hmm. We have to develop our intellectual capital in a manner that is usable mm -hmm. to make sure that when you enter into a corporation, you enter with an intent to master everything there is to master mm -hmm. in that organization and gain expert power. And it's from expert power that you can lead a major corporation like the Standard Bank as a Sim Shabalala. We have to find ways of multiplying the Sim Shabalalas of this world a thousandfold, a millionfold. And when that happens, we shall redefine South Africa as a political economy in our own image. It's interesting because you know, I had a, a chat with a, a good friend, Kuma Shonyana, who is a woman I know you know quite well. He's currently the chairman of Investec. You know, gossiping about uh, Fanititi, um, the CEO. And, and there's a trend which is very interesting to observe. So there's a, a brother, um, Loazibam, who's an outgoing CEO of Deloitte. Um, since Gloria, I think, spoke about um, Rai Sibe. You look at our AG, Tsakani. Uh, you look at, uh, I mentioned uh, Saramito Aukubong earlier, to look at um, Sipoma Seko. Uh, you look at so many successful professionals, leaders. There seems to be a trend around depth, time spent in similar roles, patience uh, over a period of time, staying power. You juxtapose that with people who today I'm CEO of Mkari Incorporated, Mundruk CEO ya construction company, Mundruana sen CEO ya Federali, Wabmon and sen CEO of Avocado. By Saturday now I'm the expert in CEO of mining. Like, like, solo in gas. What, what, what is it about this sense of this impatience? And it seems to be a general thing. Because when I look at uh, my crew, the 70s crew, and those before us, maybe it was because of apartheid, I don't know. They seem to have been a little more patient. Today, you don't see a brother for a year. He says, no, moved on. Long time ago, Mkaru, we haven't caught up. But move, but move, so in guys. I'm going, I'm going to pose that question to you because those that are moving <laughs> are, your, are, are your generation, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a, there is a, a sense in which um, we need to learn to drill deep. Mm -hmm. um, South African gold is deep-seated. Understanding business is also deep-seated. So there's a sense in which we should learn to drill deep 
And it is only by so doing that we can gain the requisite expert power. And expert power does work. Hmm. So you have mentioned um, a number of, of your people, your generation, or perhaps a little older in some instances. Uh, some, some of them are actually very exemplary. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at uh, Exaro, for instance, mm -hmm. in mining, mm -hmm. I, I must say that I was actually party to helping them establish themselves. Yes. Because I'm, as chairman of ESCOM, I just insisted mm -hmm. that uh, whatever, ESCOM, whatever coal ESCOM burns shall come from ASCs. They were called ASCs at mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. So that gave them a, a leg up. Mm -hmm. So Wherever you have some leverage, even as you drill deep, make sure that networking, mm. the network currently may, may actually be um, not as extensive as it, as it should be. Make sure that you network very, very uh, extensively because from networking comes synergies. That, 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 that whole network phrase is, um, I find a lot of young people who say younger people will say that, because um, are you doing well? Because people know you. As if someone was born known, unless you're from Wanaka Mandela, but most of us are not. What is networking? And how do you, is it a skill? Is it an art? Because sometimes it sounds like a catchphrase. Is it, what, how do you network? What, what is networking? It assumes various forms. Um, it, is, it is not a, 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 an interconnection of gossip clubs. <laughs> <laughs> you actually have to uh, think about what it is you want to network about. Hmm. Those who have, been, who have come before the younger ones must also know that there is such a thing as uh, mentorship and sponsorship. Mm -hmm. And sponsorship actually ramifies and you can actually enable and catalyze processes for a number of people. So network, networking has got to be networking that is goal-directed, that is meant to actually have a cardinal. I'm, I'm going to interrupt. How do you first establish a goal as a being? Oh. Often they say, and motivational speakers, they keep repeating this purpose business. Sorry, Peter, it's starting to irritate. Is, what is a goal? What is a purpose? How do you develop? How do you get to know that what you think or feel you think you want is what you really, really want or should mm. want? Mm. I think um, it, is, it is a plateau, uh, but I don't want to pretend I've read say, uh, 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 philosophy, but plateau, amongst other lessons that he gives us, is that... Um, the first and best victory that uh, you can actually boast of is conquering yourself. Hmm. So the, the starting point is at the individual level. You've got to conquer yourself. Find ways of fighting your limitations. Find ways of actually getting out of your way. Because, I mean, one of the biggest handicaps we have uh, our own selves. So find ways of actually doing that. And having found that, found other people who actually care to do that and hook up. And then find ways of aligning. Having conquered yourselves individually, find ways of aligning as a group, as an entire association. I want to believe that the BMF, to a degree, has actually delivered that. Right. Um, there are those who say perhaps it should now become the, 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 the business management forum, but there's still a long way to go before we uh, reach equitability uh, in South Africa. What's your description of failure? Um, a few years ago in the 80s, you boldly wanted to build, you did build, by the way, a Disney equivalent for South Africa. And in the interest of time, maybe share with us the idea behind Sherwell. Was it a success? Was it a failure? 
It was both. <laughs> <laughs> both in the sense that um, in the... Papa, I simply like before he fell in Paris, he passes. What was the big idea? How did you go about it? And I know I'm pushing you on time. And how do you arrive at even a determination as to whether it was a success or a failure? Yeah. The idea was to bring, to build South Africa's own Disney world or Disneyland, but with a focus to combining education and entertainment. So the center was meant to be an edutainment center. Mm -hmm. To develop the, 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 the idea and to actually eventuate it, uh, its implementation took a lot of doing. Mm -hmm. I was approached by a Jewish friend of mine mm -hmm. um, who has passed away recently, bless his soul, mm -hmm. one John T. Sandler, mm -hmm. who said, you know, I've been trying to um, build, this, to come up with this idea, uh, but it looks like I can't raise the money. Mm -hmm. I wanted to raise, say, 10 million on a syndicated basis. Mm -hmm. And I said, but have you actually done your uh, research? Have you done your feasibilities? And he said, no, it's an idea I have and I believe it can work. And I said, well, life doesn't work that way uh, when you approach banks. So let's uh, join forces and I will focus more on the research and building the case, building the feasibility. And inside uh, two months, we had actually approached one bank. We said, the idea is fairly compelling. Do a bit, of, a bit more work, which we did, mm -hmm. and we could build ShareWorld. And by the time we built ShareWorld, we had raised 19.4 million. 19? Uh, with 19.4 million in 19, 1986 was good money. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the banks used to say, well, you got to have security. Uh, the sum total of my security at the time was a small double-story house in Pimville, mm. uh, on, on which I was still owing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but be that as may, uh, the, they believed in the concept, and we actually uh, ended up trying big. If you try big, you can succeed big, mm -hmm. or you can fail big. Hmm. But whatever the consequence is, learn big. Hmm. So the Standard Bank said, Chum, you have just you know, burned 19.4. In fact, it had actually increased because, I mean, we're not making any profit, mm -hmm. to 29 million. Mm -hmm. You have burned 29 million. Hmm. And, and, and those around me said, no, because you have cooked your goose. <laughs> we, we, we don't know if you'll be able to consume it. Mm. And then I went to the, to the bank and said, well, we tried our very best. And they mm. said, what lessons have you learned? Mm. And I gave them uh, an account of the lessons that we have learned. Uh, at the time, I was uh, a member of SBSA. Mm. Uh, within a few months, given the kind of lessons that I fancied I had learned and was able to communicate back to the bank, I was promoted to the Standard Bank uh, Investment Corporation, which is a holding company, instead of being fired. So they are, uh, Bani Pichana should learn from you. So you were broke and you still made it to the board. Yeah. Not Bani, uh, the other brother, Sipo. Uh, so, so what happened to their money? Did they take the house? What happened to you? Did the bank take the house? Well, they, they took it, but it was worth uh, my, my house in, in Pimville. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It was worth nothing, man. <laughs> it was funded by them. <laughs> <laughs> and I was still owing them. <laughs> A lot of young people would say that they've got grand ideas, big ideas. They are not a royal cause. I would have um, relationships with uh, John D. Sandler. I uh, have some association with Standard Bank, but they say nobody listens to them. They could, be, they could build a better share world and it would be 20 times thousand more successful than Royal Cosa. Mm -hmm. But uh, they say they are not connected, nobody knows them, and that's why they're not succeeding. Is that 
Does that sound about possibly being, being truth about South Africa? That, it, that your name matters? That uh, connections matters? Or is it about a proposition? Is it about that uh, you referred earlier on to building an intellectual base, etc.? cetera? What, what matters the most in building a business in your experience? And how important is money or access to it? Nobody is born with fame. Uh, nobody is born with a network. All of those are actually developed. So you can't say Kwaza has a bit of fame, and therefore uh, those in the money markets listen to him. You build yourself to that sort of level. And uh, what I would like to say to the young is that um, you build yourself to that level with uh, a number of things that you need to do. Mm -hmm. You got to think smart. You got to work hard. Work also smart, but put in the hours. If you and I were equally smart, but I put in more hours, chances are I would achieve a lot more than you would. Now, there are those of us who go through life resting <laughs> without being tired. My, my, father, my grandfather used to say to me, <laughs> you don't rest unless you are tired. Rest is something that you earn by dint of being tired. If you are not tired and you rest, you are not resting, you are indolent. So he planted the seed that says, work hard, work smart, put in the hours. And I would suggest that our millennials, as well as the younger generation, take that. But I'm glad if I don't ask you, We've gone through a lot of darkness in this country. You, you ran, you led ESCOM for a long time. You warned, you and your management warned about some of the issues we were going to face. We, we get told stories, man, hey, this you need, that you need, you need, you need, you need. Can you take us through like a simplistic version, Yago? From coal to my house being bright. What happens in between? What, what, what is a unit? <laughs> the unit is an element in a complex uh, machinery. But uh, that unit, uh, such as the one that actually is supposed to have uh, fallen into our only uh, nuclear power station mm. in the Cape, <laughs> <laughs> Um, cannot function unless there's brain power, there's dedicated thinking, there's dedicated planning, there's dedicated leadership behind it. When um, I joined ESCOM as chairman in 1997, ESCOM was extremely highly indebted. The debt equity ratio was 3.1 to 1. In other words, for every rand of equity that the company had, it was owing three rands, 10 cents. Hmm. By dint of actually providing the requisite leadership, well, I'm, 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 no elect, uh, I'm no electrician, I have no electrical qualification. Mm -hmm. I'm not even a chartered accountant. Mm -hmm. I'm just a failed psychologist. <laughs> but utilize that which one has learned, the th what I referred to earlier on as a basket with concepts, mm. a conceptual basket full. Mm. Um, by 2001, towards the end, uh, the debt equity ratio had reduced, by way of working with people, mm. one of the most important things in business is ability to work with people in a manner that some call charismatic. There's, there's no such thing as charismatic. Charisma is actually working with people, making them feel a lot more important about themselves right. than they feel about you. Hmm. 
A catalyst is fine, it's important, but there's got to be elements. And the elements were there in ESCOM. Uh, the finance and treasury of ESCOM at the time was actually superior to most banks' finance and treasury. The electricians that we had were among the best, but all they needed was a catalytic agent to catalyze that. So by the end of 2001, we were in fact voted the global power company of the year. Correct. Not only that, ah, I better know Moody's. <laughs> I would gel us down. Hey. Moody, Moody's has rated us above the sovereign. In other words, ESCOM, a state-owned enterprise run along business lines, was rated as more credit-worthy than South Africa Incorporated. So, so, so when you see ESCOM fumbling from one chairman to another, from one CEO to another, how do you feel? Do you not say to mum, sorry, right? <laughs> do you not say to mum in, uh, to ESCOM? <laughs> um, my, my heart bleeds, but um, <laughs> you, you don't want to try and reign or rule from the grave. I mean, I'm in the grave where ESCOM is concerned. <laughs> There's no way I go back there. Hmm. Um, but, but somebody has got to actually save ESCOM. And let, then, let's rephrase. If somebody had to say, uh, Dr. Koza, I have been too much to ESCOM, what are the three things I should do right now to help give South Africa some energy security? What would be those three key points that you could share? Director, I hope you're listening. You're watching. I, th I think you start with, um, with, with the requisite expertise. The requisite expertise. Expertise. Uh, Is this at board uh, level, by, at and, ESCO level? Uh, but, but, but by the way, we actually, together with uh, former ESCOM people, um, about five years ago, we actually went with a proposal to put together. There are at least four former ESCOM people that are helping run major utilities in the Pacific Rim, and that includes Australia. Uh, one of them is one uh, Dr. Steve Lennon, and there are three others. Mm -hmm. We said to them, your country needs you. Would you like to come home? They said, yeah, uh, we're earning good buddle out here, but the country is more important. And we, pro we, 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 we proceeded to uh, approach the authorities that way those uh, five years ago and they would not listen to us because they had other intentions mm -hmm. about uh, you know ESCOM as one of those uh, cows that could be milked we were brushed aside yeah. with gusto man no if they were to call and say, Koza, your thoughts, your proposals, as per five years ago, things have changed in South Africa, would you be willing to offer some advice or even persuade some of those former executives and engineers that uh, were keen to support? In other words, are you tumable? I think I've done my bit. I am tumable insofar as I was tumored to the PIC. And I want to believe uh, in 27 months I've delivered on that score. I don't want to, I a, I don't want to do any macabre I think PIC meeting. doesn't support black businesses and black deals. What's the story there? It's a, it's with a PIC? lie. It's a lie. Really? Yeah, but I don't have the time to talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, if it was true... Because but, of, but there are more white businesses that get more money out of their PIC, big deals, and uh, black people get to be strung along for small monies in the, um, un, um, what do they call it, unlisted portfolio. But in the listed portfolio, as far as I racial small like, I'm a CEO, 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 I'm a
Mm -hmm. Which is a lie. <laughs> I mean, um, uh, upward of 70% mm -hmm. of what is called impact investments right. are investments in the black sector. And I would, um, given time, I would actually go through them uh, one at a time. There are those that fail dismally. There are those that succeed. But that is the nature of, um, you know, startup businesses. And uh, we did not get discouraged by that. But uh, the problem uh, prior to our going in there was the fact that um, um, impact investments were made with buddies. With? Buddies. Buddies, okay. Yeah. Okay. But buddies who did not actually bring uh, any intellectual capital, who did not quite understand. So they get given these uh, uh, millions, at times even billions actually. Uh, I don't want to talk about those that were given those billions and have wasted them uh, in a manner that is very much untoward and we're, we're still, we were still in pursuit of that. I want to believe that those that succeed us will actually pursue that. Dr. Kosa, you, I think one of the things that came out very strongly tonight was how you just do so many things. How do you manage your time? How do you deploy it? Matlela at all, how, how does it work? If you want to have anything done, give it to a busy person. If you want to have anything done, done, give, give it, it to, to a busy, busy person. person. Okay? That's how all of those kinds of things got done by somebody who was ostensibly busy. Hmm. But I mean, there are many of us here, I don't know, on average, how many of us uh, sleep uh, plus minus eight hours? Hmm. Perhaps the majority of us. But if you sleep eight hours out of 24, what that effectively means is that if you were to live until you were 60, for 20 years of those 60 years, you would actually have been asleep. So eat into those sleeping hours. Eat into them. Eat into reclaim them. them. Uh, reclaim some of those sleeping <laughs> Just some, hours. Some expropriation of hours. <laughs> expropriation of hours that are not utilized. <laughs> I imagine, six years old and for a third of that, you were asleep <laughs> and dreaming. <laughs> you know, the dreams that are really useful are the dreams that you dream Awake. <laughs> Dreaming asleep, any fool can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so stay awake a little longer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would like us to... Um, um, to, to but you haven't, you haven't responded to my question about, about that of your generation and the generation to come. What about? I, want to know, I want to know how you, as the bridge between myself and my grandchildren, um, are actually planning and doing. Yeah. Particularly those of you who are members of the intelligentsia. Yeah. Those of you who have equipped yourself mm. with the requisite uh, thinking skills. So tell me a little bit about no, what... No, um, I mean, your, in the your... interest of time, mm -hmm. um, there's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, I want to assure you that there's... Um, and it's very... It's, it is a very... Um, a strong, very imaging sense of agency and ownership amongst young black professionals than they may have been even amongst your generation. Um, but I think they may have been slower in pronouncing. I think that uh, the developments in our politics are evidence to that, that uh, being a liberator does not entitle you to this young people's future forever. I think young people are very clear about that. I'm, I'm even, even more encouraged by kids who go to private schools who... Um, are not scared and intimidated by skin color mm -hmm. because they compete with you for in the class and they kick your ass. They compete with you on the rugby field or soccer field and you beat them. Um, boys, they can compete with you for the hottest girls at school and they win. So, so these young black men, young black boys and girls 
particularly the private schools ones, are more affirmed than some of us may have been, where skin color was currency. They have tangible evidence that uh, your skin color does not determine whether you're going to win or lose. You either are black and competent or white and competent or black and stupid or white and stupid. That mm -hmm. race actually should not determine who wins or loses. So I'm, I'm even more um, encouraged by the younger ones. So your grandchildren, those ones seem to have it on lockdown. I am worried about my, probably some of my generation that I think we, we, we almost got stuck in the heydays of the Tawambeki economy where you could uh, be promoted quickly because the pressure for limited black skills and the competition was high, people got promoted sometimes prematurely, got paid properly, deals were flowing, and people started to believe that they were that hot. Mm -hmm. And I think the times of Jacob Zuma um, and the Guptas where the resources got concentrated uh, were, were an interesting awakening to some of my friends and cousins. So, 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 uh, Doctor, I can, I can tell you that um, I'm quite convinced that okay. I just hope that um, we can fast track that. So, I think, I think uh, there's a generation coming that has got it on lockdown. I think we are holding them back. If they had it their way, some of these useless leaders would have long been buried, not physically. Mm. Have I... Mm. So should you exit uh, uh, 25 years from now, you should be comfortable that there's a generation that seems to be working. Mm. Mm. And, and I think with people like yourself, exemplary leaders like you, taking their time this evening to share these gems, I want to believe that the needle is moving. Mm. Yeah. I don't want to thank you yet and check you out before we spend time on who do you pray to? Who's your God? Share a bit to me about your spirituality. Who do you speak to when the books and the reading and all of... Yeah, let's go there. This is my adoptive son and he's forcing me to blaspheme. I'm going to blaspheme. But let me react to your, um, what you outlined. Sure. I, I, I want to believe that, um, yes, we, 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 we are approaching critical mass in your generation. And I would plead with you to find ways of consolidating sure. and moving, yeah. consolidate and move. And I want to believe that um, if we do that consciously, we will and, and, and stop mm. squatting parasitically. Stop squatting parasitically. Yeah. What does that mean? S stop so much squatting English as, 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 a, as a parasite mm -hmm. on corporate South Africa. Mm. Start our own and build them, mm. and not uh, go and you know plead with some of these corporations for accommodation, and let your government facilitate all of that, like the Africaners. Uh, actually facilitated the sun lamps of this world, the federal false balakens of this world. It was deliberate, it was purposeful, and nobody accused them of uh, being self-serving. You're self-serving if you get individualistic, but if you serve the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, and the excessive dalliance, as, as, as it is now with white business, as only the successful business, has got to come to an end. And it's your generation that has got to call that to book and call a stop to it. Dr. Koza, with so many directorships that you hold, <laughs> with so many directorships that you hold, you're now the... I no longer, I no longer hold many directorships. Oh, no, well, but so, so you, are, you are chairing the Discovery Bank Holdings and the bank, I think you chair ASIPOL. Yes. Um, and quite a few... And part own Coral Break. You part and, own and, Coral Break. And, and yeah. therefore insist is your, is your, on... Are your partners from Ital Tile here? <laughs> I think uh, the chairman of one of Ital Tile should be in the room. You part own Ital Tile. I mean, 
By the way, he, 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 he said to me he will agree to talk to me if we don't spend time talking about his credentials. And I'm trying hard to avoid those, but some of them are difficult to ignore. With the influence and power that you currently hold outside your entrepreneurial ventures in corporate South Africa, are you satisfied that you have been active enough to push the needle so that the task that you're throwing at my generation and those who are coming after me, do you feel that foundationally you've done your job? I would like to leave it to yourselves and posterity to pronounce on that. I can't <laughs> pronounce on that myself. So what little bit we could do in sure. our generation, I want to believe we did, but the assessment should be left to the next generation. You just throw the gauntlet on a generation to say, start, build, birth things. You've also been birthing it um, at a, quite a pace in recent years. I mean, how many hotels do we have now at Hoyo Hoyo? How many? Uh, it's about seven uh, sites, I think. You have to visit Hoyo, my favorite one. If you listen to Power, you know we always make noise about Hoyo Hoyo Crosscorp. Namakota Peni, Avoc. I mean, how old is the Avoc business? And to, as Sis Lere was saying, to now becoming the largest exporter into Europe. And we haven't even touched Macedonia nuts. We haven't talked about your cattle farming. I mean, how old is the other business? And you seem to have built it quite rapidly in a relatively short space of time. We bought it in 2007. 2007 is yesterday. This is uh, yeah. and 30 we, years now. And we cooperated and um, learned from those that ostensibly understood. So when we first started, you know, you, you've got to be humble enough to learn from those who actually understand the business, right. who understand the farming itself. Uh, my late father used to uh, say something to me that was a bit of an oxymoron. He would uh, say to me, in order for you to succeed, son, particularly where there's some leadership involved, when you get into a new situation, you need to have a measure of intelligent ig ignorance. Hmm. Now, that sounds like a contradiction in terms, but what it effectively means is that be humble enough to learn. So we learned from a white-owned um, uh, far farming community in Bumalanga, right. which was one of the leading ones, uh, Eshel Hall and & Sons. And in two, three years, we were able to say to them, go home, hmm. we can do that uh, which you have taught us to do. And in another three years, we had actually doubled the facility, the, the, the packing line uh, from 1,000 square meters of floor space to... 2,200 square meters of That's why I ask, on who's your own. God? <laughs> Which God is this? The, who's God? I don't quite know. What, what I know is that I believe in the God principle. I believe there's a God. And I believe he's almighty. Uh, my father, who was a preacher, used to use big terms like he's omnipotent hmm. and omniscient and those kinds of uh, descriptives. I believe there's a God. Mm. Uh, we, we, were told, we were told by those who actually uh, came to civilize the natives <laughs> that um, uh, that God is Yahweh or Jehovah, and he cannot be seen otherwise. But Islam will tell you that it's Allah and not Yahweh, and will interpret that God somewhat differently. And Buddhists will also give you another interpretation. I want to believe that um, beyond deism in South Africa, there must have been something about worshipping a god, or gods if you like, but all of those gods actually pyramids to one god. Mm -hmm. So there is a sense in which um, even as Africans, we can actually interpret God in a manner that actually says long before the white people came there was Tiko, there was Nkulunkulu, there was um, um, Kubiane in, in Shangan, so. or Shikwembu. So. Uh, you can't jettison that willy-nilly and uh, take the God of the Jews. I, try, I, I, did, I did that a lot. Uh, and in 1998, I had occasion to visit uh, Israel. 
and I spent time with uh, the rabbi of Jerusalem. Correct. And I told him I was a uh, Christian. Christian. <laughs> and he smiled wryly and said, um, Christians, you're a follower of Christ. And I said, yes. Uh, and th- th- there are many of us in Africa. He says, that's fine. Um, Christ, Christ in, to us Jews, and he was a Jew, uh, was uh, just one of the smarter guys we had, and was one of the prophets. Uh, don't you have wise people back home? <laughs> and if you do, why can't you codify that into a religion or a belief system? And uh, that that shook me a little bit because by the time I was 21 uh, back home, my father was a preacher and pumped me to the brim (laughs) with with Christianity. He he had pumped me with enough Christianity to last three lifetimes. (laughs) 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 So, uh, but but, but those uh, deliberations, I I believe, uh, belong somewhere. You remember in introducing my response to his question, I was afraid that was going to force me to blaspheme. I don't want to be blasphemous. South Africa is a Christian country. Stay Christian, but don't lap up just about everything that any preacher comes up with you, Uh, particularly the charismatic creatures that come and actually deprive you of whatever little money you have in the name of Christ. On that note, shall we say amen? Um, We, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it wouldn't cover all. But I must thank you, uh, Dr. Koza. I uh, must thank Baga Koza. I must thank Bagam Kari, Bagam Gimeti. I must thank all South Africans, the rest of the continent who spent very valuable time uh, to be with us tonight. We shall do it again. I am tempted, because there are so many people, so many subjects, matters that we want to cover as power and as Capricorn. And I know I made a commitment um, in the inaugural chairman's conversation that I'll do it once a year. We actually planned it in the beginning that we'll do it in in, in June, which is the birthday of power. We changed it a bit for a year to accommodate Rupert's timing. So November is actually not the original chairman's conversation time. It's supposed to happen at the birthday of power, which is the 18th, around about that week. So I'm happy to announce that the next chairman's conversation is going to happen in June next year, um, which is about six or seven months from now. And uh, those of you who don't worship other people's gods, if you talk to your gods nicely, Maybe we might do it twice a year next year. Let's just go and consult and our ancestors will advise us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so, so much. Uh, there's no way we can draw all of Koza in one night, in an hour and a half. Uh, we spend half an hour feeling and hearing him musically and about an hour and a half laughing together. I hope you found the rural Koza in you because there's a lot of you that um, must resonate with some of the things that he shared based on his life experience. I pray and wish that you find your voice some more, particularly in these dark and difficult times where I suspect, actually, that's where those of us uh, who believe in real spirits can hear more when things are quiet. May you hear your gods more, whether that God is an Allah or a Jesus or a Buddha, or in my case, if in Madala, a Bagashiluman. <laughs> May you hear your gods much more clearly. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so, so much for honoring us. Dr. Kosa, you can see this now. Thank you.